Okay, hello and welcome. Uh, in this video series, we will be going through the 2007 um, AP Statistics free response questions. Uh, we'll be going through questions one through five. Uh, we will not be doing question six. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with question number one. So this first question says, <clears throat> the Department of Agriculture at a university was interested in determining whether a preservative was effective in reducing discoloration in frozen strawberries. A sample of 50 ripe strawberries was prepared for freezing. Then the, the sample was randomly divided into two groups of 25 strawberries each. Each strawberry was placed into a small plastic bag. Then, uh, excuse me, the 25 bags in the control group were sealed. The preservative was added to the 25 bags containing strawberries in the treatment group, and then those bags were sealed. All bags were stored at 0% uh, Celsius for a period of six months. At the end of this time, after the strawberries were thawed, a technician rated each strawberry's discoloration from 1 to 10, with a low score indicating little discoloration. The dot plots below show the distributions of discoloration rating for the control group, uh, excuse me, for the control and treatment groups. This uh, number one has been split into three parts. Uh, let's go ahead and look at each part individually. Standard deviations of ratings for the control group is 2.141. Explain how this value summarizes variability in the control group. And what we're what they're really looking for in this is can you do you understand what standard deviation means? And the standard deviation is the average distance a data set is from the mean. And so an acceptable answer for this would be something along the lines of 2.141 is the average distance um, the individual or you could say the observed uh, discoloration discoloration rates discoloration rates differs from the mean differ uh, the mean discoloration did I spell differs correctly hmm. uh, <laughs> differs from the mean discoloration and that right there is enough uh, of an answer to earn you full credit because again what they're looking for is two things can you correctly interpret what standard deviation is and make sure you write it in context so 2.141 is the average uh, the average distance oh I forgot a word the average distance uh, the individual discoloration rates differs from the mean discoloration I added the context, I correctly stated what standard deviation is, therefore this would be an answer that makes full credit. Let's move on to part B. Part B asks, based on the dot plots, comment on the effectiveness of the preservative in lowering the amount of discoloration in strawberries. No calculations are necessary. Um, so notice that we are trying to uh, lower the amounts uh, and we do have to know some vocabulary here. You've got the control, uh, which is the bottom dot plot. And so the control is the no change, no treatment. Uh, and the, <clears throat> the one that says treatment uh, is the um, with preservative. So you do need to know that much, and we have to look at these dot plots and say, has, based on our looking at these dot plots, has the preservative had an impact on lowering discoloration rates? And we can see, quite plainly, yes, it has. Uh, and we can see that because if we look at where the bulk of the data is, Clearly, there is more, the, the mean of the top dot plot is lower and the bulk of the data is all lower on the part with preservative than the part that uh, does not have the preservative. So we state, yes, it has, right? That's half of what we need for a correct answer. Now, to make a complete answer, we need to make sure that we're stating it in context and we need to make sure that we are uh, linking our thinking explicitly with what we see on the dot plot. So something like this uh, would be able to get full credit. So yes, it has. 
um, it is clear based on the dot plots that the top treatment that the uh, treatment has lowered the mean uh, I should say the overall mean uh, on discoloration doesn't say calculations are necessary so we don't need to give a specific amount that it has uh, it doesn't tell us that we need to look at medians or quartile ones or quartile threes we can look at those um, but we don't have to uh, this as we have said yes it has and we've made a clear distinction of that it has based on looking at the dot plots this would be a full credit portion of this problem now let's move on to part C Researchers at the university decided to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the difference in mean discoloration rating between strawberries that were not treated with the preservative and those that were treated with the preservative. The confidence interval they obtained was 0.16 to 2.172, or excuse me, 2.72. Assume that the conditions necessary for the T confidence intervals are met. Based on this confidence interval, comment on whether there would be a difference in the population mean discoloration ratings for the treated and untreated strawberries. Essentially, what we're doing here is we are writing a conclusion. Uh, we are writing a conclusion to a hypothesis test based on the results of uh, the confidence interval. And so you need to know uh, that if the value is not within the interval, that we would reject the null hypothesis. If that if the value is in the confidence interval, that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, and then we need to write the correct uh, conclusion from there. So what is it we need to write uh, anytime you are writing a conclusion uh, what I always teach my students is that you need to uh, take a craps and that is we need to uh, state it in context we need to state whether we are going to reject or fail to reject um, we need to assume significance that's our a and s uh, which in this case uh, we have a 95% confidence interval so we call that 0 0.05 significance I should stop writing words in there and then we need to state the p-value in this case we can't really state a p-value because it wasn't given what we're gonna state instead is uh, the confidence interval and our results from that okay so let's go ahead and uh, write our conclusion so we're going to say, uh, this is part C, based on our interval, we would reject the null hypothesis because zero is not contained in the interval contained in the interval uh, again a confidence interval is kind of like the list of plausible values and so uh, zero not being a positive value means there's a distance um, and then we would write something along the lines of there is evidence to suggest that Uh, the um, that the discoloration rating between strawberries not treated uh, and those treated is reduced by 
2.16 to 2.72. So it's written in context. I have everything about the discoloration of rating of strawberries down there. Uh, I have rejected or failed to reject it. I clearly stated that I rejected. Um, and, be, and the reason why I rejected it, because I can't state a p-value, is because zero is not contained in the interval. Uh, and I should say, I should let's add on here, because I did not do it, uh, at the 0 0.05 alpha level, or significance level. And there we have it. So these three, here's the three points for the first question in 2007. Again, uh, these are uh, approximates. You might have something similar uh, and still receive full, uh, full marks for this question. Um, but this is an example of uh, what would be correct, uh, correct, uh, a correct answer. Uh, okay, so that's what we have for this video. Uh, if you thought this was helpful, uh, like, comment, and share. And um, I will leave a link in the comments uh, where you can receive all of this information, including the AP uh, College Board answer keys for the 2007, so you can read through their solutions yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll have you can continue watching for uh, number two in the 2007 series in the next video. Thanks.